Yeah, hi everyone. It is October the 17th, Sunday morning for me. The sun is out now, but I've just spent the morning shoveling snow from my greenhouse. So it's, um, for me, the weather is changing quite quickly. This video is made because uh, as I read through a lot of the comments that appeared from my William Shatner video, on free voice um, I think some people got a bit confused with what I was trying to present there and I and, and I think I was a bit confusing in, in the in the presentation and the language I was using um, because of course I hadn't planned to talk about the whole consciousness manifestation thing I was going to talk about William Shatner and it just kind of came out so I want to just clarify more of what I was saying so that if something goes forward, if we as a group go forward, we are we're focused where I'd like us where I'd like things or where I think you, you where I think you actually can focus as opposed to where people wish they can focus this kind of activity. So this is going to be as always my videos will be challenging, but We'll see if it takes us someplace actually useful. Uh, the images you're seeing over top of this, because I didn't think you needed to see me sitting here scratching my head or whatever while I'm talking to you. So um, these are images of the of another enunciation. One of, as you know, I love that image and the various symbols of it. This is another one from Florence from the Uffizi Gallery. You're going to see pieces of the, uh, I think it's Filippi who's uh, 1481, I think, is this enunciation. But I couldn't get the whole thing in one shot. So you're going to see it in two pieces. I'll cut the cut the image, cut the uh, two images in half. So you'll see the left side of it first, and then the receiving end of, of Mary, the last half of the video, just so you know what you're looking at. And with the idea that we're trying to do something a bit similar to what the enunciation is presenting. So that's why I've chosen this image. So. When we're talking about conscious manifestation, when we're talking about the group, a group of people using very clear, um, using a very clear focus of intent in order to manifest in this reality, that's taken, that's often taken in completely wrong directions. Uh, usually, as soon as someone understands that there is some link between our thought and the reality we experience, generally people try to believe themselves into a sense that they can they can get whatever they want. And usually it becomes a very egoic want. I want money, I want I want health, I want better clothes, I want bigger boobs, I want whatever, right? It's always something about me, me, me. And then some people sort of switch the me and like, well, I want a perfect world. I want a world where every where the where the world is the way I think it should be. You have to remember now we're we're talking about can we, how can we use this power potentially to influence our experience? Millions of people, millions of New Agers have prayed for peace on Earth for the last fifty years. It hasn't gotten any closer. In fact, as we see, it's getting further and further away. How many very powerful native, we'll use shamans in this particular term, but you know I don't like the word, medicine people, be they Sioux, Cheyenne, Cherokee, Arapaho, Aboriginal, Zulu, uh, Tibetan, uh, early European individuals, whatever pre-Incas, uh, people of the Brazilian basin, how many of them, who I guarantee are much more knowledgeable in the powers of manifestation and the powers of dealing with reality, how many prayers went into saving their culture and giving them, giving them their world back and keeping the, the usurpers from taking them over, seemingly they all failed. No matter how powerful they were, they weren't they weren't more powerful than the bullets that were being shot at them. 
So, if people are thinking you're going to track down some kind of power and you're going to fix the world to make it how you want it to be, you're already 180 degrees in the wrong direction. And that's because you don't know what this reality is supposed to be. You're already pre-assuming pre that your specific view, your specific want, your specific beliefs is what this reality is supposed to be. And you don't know. This reality, this particular three-dimensional reality that we inhibit might be meant to be an insane asylum. It might be meant to be total insanity. And you're not going to change it. Now, that doesn't mean we've seen that we can alter experience and we can alter certain elements of this place. But just like a video game, if a character is not supposed to go through a particular door, if it's not programmed to go through the door, you can pray for that character as long as you want. The character's never going to go through the door. Can't happen in this reality. So you're already you're already up against it if you're going to try to say, oh, let's get a million of us to you know, pray for some sort of some sort of a change to our reality to get what we want, probably that's going to be as successful as the millions and millions and millions who've done the same thing before you. Total failure. I'm just being very clear. Total failure. You're back to rows. You can move mountains, but the mountains have to be agreeable to be moved. And in a sense, the dream itself, this reality has to be okay that the mountain moves from one place to another. So until you can be first become into agreement with the dream, come into understanding with what the dream really wants, what the dream really is, what the dream, whether you call it a simulation, a matrix, a non-real reality, a dream, or whatever you want to call it, until you actually know what that is and how it operates, you really don't know what, what's going on. So as long as you're attempting to, to manifest change in this reality, you're already at a 50-50 possibility because you don't know if the change is allowed, you might say, by the construct of this particular place. If you look at the movie The 13th Floor uh, as a really good example, once those characters went into the simulation and were a part of 1937 Los Angeles, they can't start changing all of a sudden for it to be 1950s Brooklyn and go watch Duke Snyder play for the Dodgers. It's just not going to happen because it's not it's not programmed within the construct. You have to know the system, know the construct, know the possibilities, and then you can work with it. So we've got that issue first. Attempting to try to change this reality, to make prop changes in the show is what it really is. Like one person suggested we should all try to manifest, a, 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 and I'm not, I'm not picking on the person who, who made this comment, right? I... I, I it's it I'm glad you made it the person because you just he just made it a couple of like a day or two, a day ago or something so I just read it before I did this video but made a suggestion we should all try to manifest the yellow cube outside the Lincoln Memorial in Washington and logically that would sort of make sense but even if you can so what you you made a yellow cube on the ground outside Lincoln Memorial big deal it's just you just manifested an object in reality that so what that doesn't mean you can, even if you, even if you could do that, it doesn't mean you're manifesting anything else. It just means, okay, you can manifest some stuff, big deal. That doesn't mean you're actually making changes, because if this reality is going to change, if this particular place we live in, this particular dream we inhabit, if it's going to actually change to the point of where those of us who follow channels like myself and Matt and Campbell and the others out there, Every single system in this reality has to come down. You can't have any more government systems, any more uh, religious systems, any more commercial systems, any more legal systems, any more education systems, any more health systems, any more nothing. Every single thing that it's called a system, which is a part of keeping the matrix in, in, in place on one particular aspect, they all have to come down. You can't change any part of it. You can't alter it. You can't, oh, if we just bring in these leaders, oh, if we just tweak this a little bit, oh, if we just, we add this little thing to it. They've all got to go. Everything. The whole system, 
everyone has ever known for their entire life has all got to be blown to shreds. And then who knows what the end result would be of a world of humans, animals, trees, rocks, water, and absolutely no system in place to govern, you might say, to, to, to lay something down over top of it. That's what would have to happen. Now, if, yeah, if a billion people prayed for that, well, maybe that, that's a possibility. That could happen. Maybe every single system could come down, but you couldn't possibly know what the next step would be from that total and complete destruction. But uh, I think there is something that we could consciously manifest towards a particular idea. And that's why I'm making this video, so that if we're actually going to do this, we might as well give ourselves the best possibility of success that we can. We don't want to put a whole lot of time and effort into something that's probably going to be a losing proposition. Let's try to put it into something that's going to have a chance to be a winning proposition. And that is, if we acknowledge that we don't really understand what the dream is, we don't really understand what this reality is meant to be, and we don't really understand how much can or cannot be changed, or why it can or cannot be changed, we really have no idea. Maybe, our, maybe we should just leave this place alone. And maybe, instead, possibly taking a cue from the Maya and the Toltecs and a whole lot of other ancient civilizations that seem to have disappeared, maybe instead of trying to change or fix or make this place better, maybe we put our focus on a completely different reality, on a completely different frequency, on a, by basically ch not changing this place, changing our frequency level, deciding that there must be other realities, and those other realities are at a different frequency range. Just like a radio, just like a radio, we are we're tuned in to you know AM 940, kind of thinking. And yeah, okay, the radio dials change. It's been 940 most of our lives. Now it's now now it's 920, and we're like, what the hell's going on? You know, as we as we talked about with with the whole download and dropping of frequencies and whatever. But why don't we just, instead of trying to play on the AM dial and see if we can move 10 or 20, uh, what do you call it, um, 10 or 20 changes on the dial, why don't we just switch to like FM or switch to something else? Why don't we literally just switch the frequency, let this reality be where it wants to be, do what it wants to do, those that want to access and still be a part of this reality great good for you i'm not in any way going to try to fix it change it alter it make it better make it worse it's fine it's, it, just leave it to be fine the way it is but maybe the focus is we don't have to accept being here we can then see if we can choose to switch reality i'm not saying we can do it maybe we can maybe we can't but if there's going to be an experiment i think that would be the thing is to somehow switch the consciousness which somehow hopefully can take the form because there's no point in just switching my consciousness to a parallel reality where my life is better so what the, the form i've known my whole life is still here it's still it's still living through this this piece of crap well what's the point of that so it would be taking the consciousness and the physical form moving the whole construct of the things we think of as ourselves and literally altering it to a different reality if we think of the the, the star trek analogy the uh the uh what do you call that <sighs> when they're beamed up and down you know with that particle d whatever where the body disappears in one place and then the body and the person reappears somewhere else right literally that but not somewhere else in our world we switch to a different reality now, that's got at least potential because we're not fighting the reality that's in place. We're not fighting this place then. The place can do what it wants. We are either then A, consciously manifesting a completely different separate reality, as Carlos Castaneda would call it, a separate reality, or the separate reality that would interest us already exists, and it's just, you might say, waiting for us to show up. 
if we did something like that, then I think there would be a possibility of actual success. Because I think we have historical precedent that that is highly likely what other ancient civilizations around the world did. It is quite possible that that's really what happened to the Maya. The Maya, for whatever reason, at, their, at the time of their life, decided we are no longer interested in being in this crap hole. And so the best thing to do is move en masse to a different, maybe less crappy hole, still probably a hole, still somewhere within Plato's cave or uh, a cave, uh, the next layer of the cave or whatever. You know, doing this is not going to get you out of the cave. This is not exiting the cave, I don't think, but it, at least it's... It is it is switching reality and it's seeing and it's and it's testing to see just just what kind of power do we have. So I don't know what the first step of this would be. I don't know what the first testing point would be, probably as a group, to see if such a place either A exists or B can be manifested and and uh, brought into brought into um Reality. Can an alternate reality be found or created? That would be the, you know, like can the island of Lost be manifested? Where once you're on the island, you're literally, the rest of the world is gone. Like the rest of the world is just going to do what it does. And the island of the island of Lost is now there. And it's, uh, once you're on it, the old laws, the old rules, the old expectations, the old systems, the old governance, the old dream is completely gone, and you're in a you're in a new world. You're in a completely different. You're in a, you're in a new world, not a brave new world like Huxley. You're in a a world that is somehow suited to those who are seeking freedom and truth and knowledge and completion of their journey, searching for the totality of the self, a place where that is possible. And maybe that is our world. Maybe the world that we actually inhabit right now, as insane as it is, maybe it is actually set up to do all that. And again, like I'm saying, we don't really know what this reality really is. Richard Rose was always very clear. You don't know anything until you know everything. And since at least I can say I don't know everything, that means there's not much I really do know, particularly about self and reality. I've got things that I've come to, I guess, have some realizations and some understandings on and have some navigational tools and have some ideas, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it, you know? I'm open that tomorrow I might find out that a whole lot of stuff I felt is pretty much accurate and pretty much true can be turned out with one experience to be shown to be just not, as happened in the canyon 15 years ago. A whole lot of stuff was revealed to be just garbage that I'd been holding on to for a number of years. And we have to be we have to be revealed in that place. But if we think we want to use our some sort of manifestation powers, which we do have, you know, you can in a limited way, you can manifest and alter and change and play with this reality. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying you can't do that here. That is very clear. You can. The question is, how much can be changed and how much would that actually matter? Is it worth the amount of energy and effort trying to push against a dream we're not really sure of when maybe it's better to find a dream that suits us? At least that's what I've been thinking here, of trying to not turn this into some new age. We're going to, we're so special, we're going to fix the world, we're wonderful, we're going to kumbaya ourselves into happy times, right? 50 years of that, and zero has changed here. Like, zero has changed. In fact, it's gotten, as we see, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. So, just because maybe a few people who who manage to, uh, you might say, delude themselves to such a degree or manage to literally just will themselves into a place where they've, they somehow put themselves apart from all this. But so what? The world itself 
and all of the group of individuals were hoping to in some way influence weren't. So that's where I think we should go with this, which is finding if we're going to put energy into this kind of work is not to play games with it, not to try to throw importance into it, not to try to make things better for me, not try to um, push against a system that we don't know what it is. Instead, we should look for what is truly the best um, the best direction, the best pathway to do this work. So that's what the video is for, is to see now, given this information from me, okay, where do you recommend if we were going to take a thousand of us, where would you be, where, where should we put our energy? What, and, and not like, not even so much the end result, like the, the big result, what we might do in a month or two, I mean, like, Step one, what should step one for this be? If a thousand of us are going to meet, what's today? Today is the 17th, right? Oh, we don't want to do the 31st because that would be a really strange day. So I was going to say two Sundays from now, but two Sundays from now is Halloween. We don't want to, you wouldn't want to start on Halloween because that's already a very specific kind of energy and, and we should, you can do a lot of stuff with um, Halloween and November 1st energy. So maybe... You make it like if we were doing this the 29th or the 30th or something, you know, maybe. If we were going to do something on that day as our first our first group test, give me an idea of what you think the first group test should be. That would be a really good piece of comments here to see if we're going to, if we're going to attempt this, what would be the direction to attempt to put our energy in? Because like I'm saying, it's there's no point putting a whole bunch of time and energy into something that's not, that doesn't have a result. Now, granted, just sitting there thinking in fear and, you know, terror and whatnot, obviously, then, okay, trying to trying to manifest world peace would probably be better than sitting in fear. I'll give that as a, <laughs> as a yeah, that's probably a step up. But that still doesn't mean it's going to, as we've seen, it doesn't mean that anything's going to happen. Let's, let's see if we can use our brains. There's a lot of really smart people that are, a part of this channel, a part of following myself and Matt and, like I say, some others. Let's hear what your idea is of what the first step would be as our first test to see if we can if we can achieve step one, whatever that might be as a group. Now we know we can, well, well now we, we can go to step two. We can, we can take this one more. And if we, if we attempt step one, if we all think this is the really good, really good way to go forward and it, we just can't do it, then we know, okay, we've, we have to reevaluate. We have to go back and start fresh again and, and see where we are. So that's what I've got to say. Um, I did notice Matt had a video today. I didn't watch much of it. Just the, the idea of he was asking, do you think you're in the Truman Show or the Matrix, right? And uh, just because it relates to this topic, I don't think either. I think if you try to if you try to push your reality down to just one symbol, one metaphor, one movie, you're already you're already going to be losing it. You're already going to be not seeing the place directly. I think these movies that are outstanding, be they The Truman Show, The Matrix, Donnie Darko, The 13th Floor, Vanilla Sky, uh, They Live, um, Dark City, uh, you know, all of these movies, I think they all offer a piece of it. Groundhog Day is another one I would throw in there. You know, they offer p key pieces of information. Pleasantville is another one, by the way. I'm just thinking of all these movies at the top of my head that ring right at the top. Um, Man from Earth would be another. Anyway, they offer a piece, an, a, 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 um, a view of reality from a particular angle, a view of reality from a particular camera lens. But it's just that's just a piece of it, or or a metaphor of it, or a, a sharing of it. You need you need to start having all of these pieces, all of these images, and understanding how they fit together and what's the what's the common similarity or what's the what's the common foundation that's there and then you can start unraveling what this place might be i think to try to narrow it down to only it must be this metaphor in this direction in this construct in this box um, you're already you're already missing the you're already getting you're getting trapped in the thing you're trying to get untrapped from um, so I think all of the things I just mentioned offer clues, offer insights, but that's what they are. Clues and insights, they're not, 
they're not exact representations. Just like if the ancient Asians talked about the world as a dream, well, the world isn't really a dream the way we think of what a dream is. It's just a metaphor. It's just a way of talking. And they, you know, it says saying the world is a dream. They might say, yeah, the, the reality is like a dream. That's usually how they put it. It's like a dream. But it doesn't mean it is a dream. It's like a dream. And you have to get this idea. The reality isn't the matrix. Like, isn't the isn't the movie Matrix? It's like the movie The Matrix. It's like the Truman Show. It's like Groundhog Day. It has, it's 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 a pointer. It's a clue, but it's not exactly how it works. And again, that's why, once we get down to the manifestation part of it, it's hard to really know. I mean, again, I've seen medicine medicine people. Sorry if I keep rambling a bit, but I've seen, just in my own life, I've seen Native medicine people do some pretty amazing stuff. You know, this reality can be altered, and, and things on an individual basis, particularly when it comes to the health of somebody, the health of certain health of certain people can be can be changed overnight. So the the reality, what we think of as the code of this particular dream we inhabit, can be hacked and can be altered. And if you know the hacking tools, you can. The, the thing is, is once you start going beyond, once you start moving from changing one person to trying to change or alter the lives of seven people it gets harder trying to alter the lives of 70 people a village it's more harder of an entire city of an entire province you know the, the more the bigger and bigger and bigger you're trying to work on the bigger scale you're working on the the more factors you're bumping in against when you're trying to make changes or or help to one individual person and you can really focus on that, lots can happen. Lots can happen for one or two, focusing on one or two people. You try to focus on two billion people, it's going to be much, way more hit and miss and way more, um, way more, uh, what's the word, I'm not distorted, that's not the right word, way more um, uh, just uh, diffused, that's the word. It's The, the energy is going to be way more diffused than it is than it is when you can laser point to one specific person, one specific thing, one specific activity, one specific specific thing. So I just want to share all that and and see if this takes us to a place where we think we have a, an experiment to try. And if we do, great. If we don't, that's fine too. It's just I just wanted to to take where that Shatner video might have been potentially leading us and try to lead us in a direction then that's useful and positive. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for supporting. Thanks always for comments and pieces of information, and in this case, the ideas you're going to suggest. And um, we'll see where all this takes us. Cheers.